Greetings YouTube, time for a bargain video. We have the Secrets of Del Tora. Um, I know this is a fantasy setting designed for like young adults. Um, it's got a map, it's got color, it's got uh, color illustrations of different monsters and such, and it describes the world and the creatures that live in it. And so I thought might, that might be interesting as ideas and inspirations for a, an RPG. Um, we have Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. I purchased this strictly as a gift to my nephews. We have Trinity by Matt Wagner. Um, I kind of have never read any of this, so I picked it up cheap. I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. Um, we have a faux history of unicorns. I thought that might be also inspirational. We have Blood and Guts, a short history of medicine. Contacting Aliens, a illustrated guide to David Brin's Uplift universe. This looks quite interesting. I believe I own the GURPS Uplift book, but I'm not positive. Um, but I was really a big fan of this series. I don't know if I read the whole thing. I read, I think, three, maybe four of the novels. I'm not sure if I read them all. Um, Daybreak 2250 AD, which was originally known as Starman Sun. This is by Andrea Norton. And this is the book that introduced me to the post-apocalyptic genre. So, as far as printed material is concerned, I don't know which film might have done that. I think I might have introduced it via film first. Um, probably something from the 50s. But uh, that uh, that was a major watershed mark in my life. And I purchased it for someone else who I saw yesterday and forgot to give to them. Eh, well, you know, that's life. Um, then we have Staying Alive, Women, Ecology, and Development. My, my wife got that. Then we have um, some DVDs. We have the Batman and Superman Dawn of versus Superman versus Dawn of Justice. I know it's not any good, but I paid a buck for it. End of Watch uh, with Michael Pena and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, I like both of these actors. We have uh, a two-movie set, Boot Hill and Vengeance Valley. And this is Terrence Hill, who is a remarkably entertaining actor. That's what I purchased him for. We have Jackie Chan's Drunken Master and Jackie Chan in Fearless Hyena. Then we have Vampires, which I have the sequel, but I didn't have the original. It's not as good as the novel. The novel is flat out just incredibly good. If you haven't read it, go read it. It's vampires with a money sign at the end instead of an S. Then we have the two disc anniversary set it a set of Apollo 13. We have whoops Batman Limited uh, Monster Mayhem and how can I not buy a disc with Batman and a robotic dinosaur? You know what I mean? Uh, the Great Raid, um, the device which is an alien invasion um, film. It kind of intrigued me. It has three commentary tracks, so they really love this movie, and I appreciate that kind of enthusiasm. Dr. Seuss's The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T, a delightful film with some incredibly wonderful avant-garde set design and, and dance choreography. Just incredibly well done. Um, it's, it's a fantasy in all ways, shapes, and forms, and yet they took the Seussian world that he created through the script and made it real in a successful way that they failed miserably to do with the films of How the Grinch Stole Christmas and uh, The Cat in the Hat, the live-action ones. Yeah, miserable failures. On to more DVDs. Here we have the complete five film run of the original Planet of the Apes on Blu-ray. I picked that up for 10 bucks. Pretty awesome. A Mighty Wind. My wife picked that up. I have no desire to see this film. Electra Girl and Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, with, uh, which never opened, with uh, Hannah Hart and Grace Helvig. Helvig? Helvig. Helvig. Um, and I haven't seen this, but I picked it up for, I don't know. Two bucks, I think. It was never opened. Uh, Scorpion King 2. I'm not expecting a lot out of this one. Uh, Pegasus versus Chimera. I'm expecting even less from this one. I'm not quite sure how a Pegasus goes up against a Chimera and wins. We'll find out. Uh, the Big Hit, which is supposed to be a crime comedy. The Omen, never opened. Uh, buy four DVDs and get one free. Uh, well, that was a long time ago. Um, I got this because I went to listen to the commentary track. The Day the Earth Stopped with C. Thomas Howell and Judd Nelson. 
a B-grade ripoff of a famous movie. How could I not pick it up? Um, I think I paid two bucks for that. Uh, 2057, The Body, The City, The World, which is a documentary from Discovery Channel. And I believe I saw part of this, and it was done in 2007, and it's supposed to be predicting the future 50 years hence. So it's been 10 years, so let's see how, how they've done so far. Um, Delirious, the rags and riches fabled by Tom DeSillo, which is about uh, paparazzi. And we have a digital microscope, which I picked up for 10 bucks at a flea market. And I thought I'd give it a try, see if I like it. And we have this. Now, I've picked up a set of these recently. It was two pounds. This is one pound. And it is just absolutely perfect. It's a little tight on my hand. So I may want to shave. I may want to keep this. This padded here. But take all the coating off the rest of it. Because this is close to the perfect size for a knuckle duster. Just look at that. One pound of steel. Yeah, that was a good find. Uh, then we have a really pleasant uh, felt, uh, wool felt slipcover we could use for a, uh, our, one of our Chromebooks or just for a meeting that my wife needs to go to. It's a really nice shape. I finally got that up for, as a, uh, for a buck at an estate sale. Um, this is, I paid 50 cents for this. This is a strainer, and I'm actually thinking about getting one of these, and I found one at a, an estate sale for half off. So that was kind of cool. Then we have this hammer. I don't know what it's for. That end's round, and it, it's like this. And this end is an edge. Anybody knows what that's for? I would really love to know. It's got a slight curve to it. Now, I don't know if that was original or if that was just what happened over the use. It has an incredibly wonderful patina on this thing. It is just a beautiful tool. I picked it up at a yard sale for a quarter. I'm just like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that for a quarter. And um, we have a kind of an unusual wrench. I've never really tried one of these. I thought I'd give it a go. Um, this is just a, it's a, you know, universal kind of a, fits a certain range and nut sizes. Um, I paid a buck for this at an estate sale. Then we have this, which is from a mortal, mortar and pestle set. This is solid brass. It's, it's large. Okay. Um, I paid $2 for this at a yard sale. Some old guy wanted to sell it, I was wanted to buy it. Not only is this a wonderful tool for what it was intended, but it's beautiful. And it would make one heck of an impact tool. Um, here we have a set of tongs, which have a lovely sound, don't they? Um, they're silver plate and they're designed for like picking up toast and such. My wife, or you know, cookies and things from cakes. My wife makes toast every day, and this will make her job a whole lot easier getting it out of the toaster oven. And it was just very attractive, and I like the sound. Then we have the Cowgirl Up knife from Schrade. Now, I didn't actually buy this for my wife. She carries a Skeletool, um, but I, I like the design, and I like the, the color of the handle, so I bought that for me. Um, then we have two bells today, which sounds like a phone, the old school phone, doesn't it? It's got three little chimes in there. Um, this is a bracelet with tiger's eye and uh, some uh, light brass. That's not solid. It's they're hollow. But I picked that up for uh, fifty cents at a yard sale. That's that's for me. Then we have this one here, designed to be like hung so air can move it around. That it just be maybe just a smidge heavy. I don't know if I. I can get the action to be a little bit looser. Yeah, I'll figure out how to do that. Um, then we have this. Now, I bought 10 of these. So I now have 50 S-hooks, light S-hooks. The reason I did that is I actually have been wanting to hang some IKEA towel racks over some doorways so we could hang bells and such and other items of art from them. And I had planned on making my own, but the, it cost me 10 bucks to get 50 of these things. And the amount of time it would take me to cut them and bend them and make them myself, and they wouldn't be shiny stainless steel, this is cheaper. And my only investment right now has been the rods themselves and a couple of bolts I had planned on using to, using to make a bending fixture. So my investment so far is minimal, so I'm like, I'm just going to buy these hooks and save myself a whole lot of work. Because my time per hour is worth at least $20 to $25 an hour as, as a craftsperson. So, yeah, 
This saves me a lot of time. They're Chinese. I can give a rat's ass that they're Chinese. I'll take the little black tips off them because I don't need that. I think they were, they were originally designed to hang plants or something. I'm just going to take the tips off and use them to hang bells and some ornaments and things like that above the doorways where, where we can access them and we can be able to ring them easily. Like, for example, that bell right there, um, which really needs to be hung. So there you go. That's a, that's a, that's a really good deal. Okay, we're going to have another section here. And I think I have to go into the basement if I remember to do it and uh, record something, which I stuff I've got down there. I put it all right, I put it down there because it was never intended to be up here. It, it's, it's stuff for my shop or, or resources for my shop. So I never had to come upstairs. So one more section up here. Oh, yeah, you think one more. We'll find out. Okay, first thing we have is this bag. Uh, when I saw my therapist last, he was using a torn grocery bag reusable re reusable grocery bag to haul things from his car you just can't have that it's it's tasteless so i have found i got this at a flea mark i mean a yard sale for a dollar and uh, i think it might have originally been a maternity bag but it's a nice bag and if you only can take it from point a to point b this could do it a lot classier and last a lot, lot longer and not tear so now we have some clothing there actually is some clothing you're not seeing in here because i've already well, uh, washed it, what was it, set our pants and a dress for my wife. I found those at a yard, couple of yard sales. And then I found a orange shemog, the traditional you know, like Arab style desert head piece. Both my wife and I wear shemogs occasionally. Uh, we have an olive and a, uh, a green one, uh, a darker shade of green. And then I've got this orange one just for fun. It was 50 cents. It's cotton shemog. Be useful for wearing in the wilderness because you're going to be more visible so good signal color then we have a wool rich sweater here for my wife she used to have a raspberry sweater but it was polyester and she just has been moving away from polyester both of us have we don't really wear many artificial fibers any longer if we can avoid them sometimes like fleece but not much this is a um sailor larry inspired or print of one of his tattoos on a t-shirt i got this for, sorry, sailor, sailor jerry sorry got this for my wife she's a fan of this art style and it was a dollar fifty um she got a uh, uh insulated balaclava and uh, this is a neck muff for myself it's from turtle fur i've been wanting to try one of these out and i they didn't even charge me at the at the estate sale they didn't charge us for either of these items so i'm like cool free headgear um, then we have a Burton, here we go, a Burton uh, flannel shirt, with the, which is lined, and it has pockets on both sides, and it's, it's like brand new condition. I mean, seriously, the, the, the dirt I just took off came from my own floor. It was just, this is just in awesome shape, and I paid six bucks for it. This is normally like a $60 shirt, so I'm like, cool. I had a, a very similar plaid shirt that I, it got kind of worn, so I got rid of it. And this is a good replacement. Then we have a monkey onesie. Yep, it's got a tail and everything. It's got a hoodie with the hood, with the, with the ear flaps. And I got this for my wife as a costume or just because it's a, you know, a monkey onesie. Who doesn't want to wear a monkey onesie? She could wear a monkey onesie while wearing a dinosaur costume. Hmm. Uh, then we have a practice quick stick, which I plan on use. I'll probably use in kind of a weapons build. I paid a buck for that. Then we have this another attractive hook it just, it's steel that someone has painted to give it a faux copper patina they even put some uh, uh, fake verdigris on there but i just happen to like the whole over overall shape i'll have to grind that little nubby off there but that's not a problem um to use for hanging bells and such on the porch it just doesn't really or, or even plants it's a really nice shape and it was three bucks um then we have two machetes now i can't first of all they someone spray painted them silver that's horrible that's horrible that someone did this. On the plus side, the spray paint may have helped preserve preserve them as from rust. But I need to strip the paint off because this one is English. This is an English machete from England. It's old. This one, I can't tell. That could be horn if I can get the paint off of all of it. I can't find any identifying marks on the blade with the paint on, but if I get the paint off, I've, I have noticed that sometimes the stamps are very shallowly done, and if they're older, it's, it, you get wear on them, so it gets even worse. So I don't know what this could be. It could be Honduran, it could be Collins, I'm not positive, 
but I picked up both of these things for like six bucks a piece. You know what I mean? They're just ridiculously inexpensive. The people did not know what they had. Literally, I put them down at the, at the estate sale, and one's like, where'd you find these? In a barrel in the basement. A basement that had beams, which were, which were trees. Half trees. The bark was still on them. It was an old house. Uh, so yeah, so that's all the stuff up here, and there may be another section with stuff from the basement, or I may say that for the next video. We shall see. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this bargain video, because this could be the end.